Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 18th of May. Cyclone Totti leaves trail of destruction along India's west coast. Pakistan's parliament passes resolution on Israel-Palestine conflict. And Nepal's Supreme Court refuses to stay Prime Minister Oli's controversial oath. And now for all the details. The cyclone Torte, which made landfall on India's west coast, killed more than 18 people and left a trail of destruction behind on Tuesday. Heavy rains continued to lash some regions even as weather officials said that the intensity of the most powerful cyclone in more than two decades had weakened. The cyclone Taute on India's west coast killed at least 19 people and damaged infrastructure and agriculture while heavy rains continued to lash some regions on Tuesday. The cyclone, which made landfall in the western state of Gujarat late on Monday, hit power supply in more than 2,000 villages in the state, as a thousand electricity pylons were damaged, nearly 160 roads were destroyed, 40,000 trees uprooted, and several houses were damaged. The cyclone, packing gusts of up to 130 miles per hour, which was categorized as extremely severe, weakened to a very severe storm after making landfall and its intensity was set to reduce further in the next few hours, the Indian Meteorological Department said. Uh, currently, the cyclone has weakened into a, a cyclonic storm level and uh, probably in another couple of hours uh, time or little more than that, it will become a cyclonic system or a cyclonic storm, which is much lower category. So basically what I'm trying to say is it, it has weakened considerably over land and by the time it reaches the Gujarat coast sometime in the late evening today, it would have become a depression. Before reaching Gujarat, the cyclone left a trail of destruction as it brushed past the coastal areas of Kerala, Karnataka, Goa as well as Maharashtra, home to India's financial hub of Mumbai. The Indian Navy said it had rescued 177 of the 270 people from one of the two barges that were adrift near the Mumbai coastline and planes and helicopters had been deployed to scour the seas and find survivors till the last reports came in. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday interacted with field officials from states and districts to converse about the experience in handling the pandemic. In the virtual meeting, Prime Minister said, Continuous efforts are being made to ramp up COVID vaccine supply in a big way as several states tackle vaccine shortage. As several states tackle vaccine shortage, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday said continuous efforts were being made to increase vaccine supply in a big way. Interacting with district magistrates from 46 districts across nine states through video conferencing on COVID-19 management, Prime Minister said localized containment zones, aggressive testing and sharing correct and complete information with people are weapons to defeat the pandemic. Even though India is the world's largest vaccine-producing nation, its vaccination program is struggling to make an impact and supplies are problematic. Battling the world's biggest jump in coronavirus infections, India halted vaccine exports a month ago after donating or selling more than 66 million doses. India has been registering a significant decline in the daily COVID-19 cases, but has seen a sharp rise in deaths due to the infection. India's total coronavirus cases surged past the 25 million mark on Tuesday. Corona ke TK ki supply ko बहुत बड़े स्तर पर बढ़ाने के निरंतर प्रयास किए जा रहे हैं वैक्सीनेशन के लेकर व्यवस्थाओं और प्रक्रियाओं को हेल्थ मिनिस्ट्री लगातार स्ट्रीमलाइन कर रही है कोशिश यह है 
कि अगले पंद्रह दिन का शेड्यूल राज्यों को एडवांस में मिल जाए मीन वाइल रिपोर्ट हैव सर्फेस दैट इंडिया इज अनलाइकली टू रिज्यूम मेजर एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ कोविड नाइन्टीन वैक्सीन अंटिल एटलीस्ट ऑक्टोबर एज इट डाइवर्ट शॉर्ट्स फॉर डोमेस्टिक यूज a longer than expected delay set to worsen supply shortages from the global covax initiative the world health organization which co-leads covax on monday called on vaccine makers outside india to advance supplies to the program given the shortfall from the south asian country in news from pakistan pakistan's parliament has passed a unanimous resolution to reiterate the country's support to two state solution to the Israel Palestine conflict and denounce Israel's attacks in Gaza on Tuesday Pakistan's foreign minister Qureshi reached Turkey from where he was scheduled to head to New York to attend an emergency UN session on the issue Pakistan's parliament on Monday passed a unanimous resolution condemning what it termed as Israel's systematic operation of the people of Palestine and demanded the UN to probe the human rights violations the resolution moved by Pakistan's foreign minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi denounces the attacks by the Israeli regime on worshippers in Al-Aqsa Mosque during Ramadan and rejected the continuing practice of forced evictions it also reaffirmed Pakistan's support for the realization of the right to self-determination of Palestinians as well as for the two state solution based on the pre 1967 borders qureshi also called on the nation to observe the coming friday as a day of solidarity with the people of palestine demonstrations have continued in parts of pakistan including karachi and islamabad to denounce israel's attacks in gaza which have killed more than 180 people हम यहाँ पर जमा है हमारे आवाम जमा है ये ऐलान करने के लिए कि पाकिस्तान फलस्तीनियों के साथ खड़ा हुआ है पाकिस्तान फलस्तीनियों को इस मुसीबत की घड़ी में तनहा नहीं छोड़ेगा इन दी लेटेस्ट ऑन ट्यूजडे पाकिस्तान फॉरन मिनिस्टर कुरेशी हैड रीच टर्की फ्रॉम वेयर ही वॉज स्केड्यूल टू हैड टू न्यू यॉर्क अलॉन्ग विद हिस्स काउंटर पार्ट ऑफ सुदान पैलेस्टाइन एंड टर्की टू एड्रेस एन एमरजेंसी सेशन ऑफ द यूनाइटेड नेशन जनरल असेंबली टू री अफर्म दियर सपोर्ट टू पैलेस्टीनियंस In news from Afghanistan, Taliban Islamists have staged a months-long campaign to expand their influence across Afghanistan as the United States began withdrawing troops from May 1 and closed some bases in keeping with a peace deal it signed with the Taliban last year. With the withdrawal of US troops underway, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani has said his country is ready for war with the Taliban. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani said on Monday his country is ready for war with the Taliban with the withdrawal of US troops underway. Ghani told PPS News Hour as far as straight out war is concerned we are ready. He said the Taliban must accept a political system based on elections although other aspects were discussable negotiable. Ghani also said the issue of power may have to be decided on the field of battle if the Taliban gains power and imposes a dictatorial regime. The key to political dialogue is that the Taliban accept that the future political system of Afghanistan is based on elections. That is the fundamental bottom line. Other things are discussable, negotiable, but if that fundamental issue is not granted, then the question of rights and the question of gains that have occurred in the last 20 years, particularly vis-a-vis -vis women, youth, minorities, all walks of life will be put into question his comments came as heavy fighting between afghan security forces and taliban insurgents resumed on monday after a 3 day ceasefire announced by both sides for the muslim holiday of eid officials said taliban islamists have staged a month long campaign to expand the influence across the country as the united states began withdrawing troops from may 1 and closed some bases in keeping with the peace deal it signed with the taliban last year Afghan officials say the Taliban have stepped up attacks since Washington announced plans to pull out all US troops by September 11. Moving on to news from Nepal. The Supreme Court of Nepal has asked the defendants to submit a written response refusing to issue an interim order on a writ petition filed against Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli and six other ministers. 
as many as four writ petitions were registered demanding that oath taken by Oli on Friday be annulled because he refused to repeat all the words President Bidya Devi Bhandari had spoken from the written document. The Supreme Court of Nepal on Tuesday asked the defendants to submit a written response refusing to issue an interim order on a writ petition filed against Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli and six other ministers. A single bench of Chief Justice Cholendra Shamshed JBR sought a written response from the defendants, including Prime Minister Oli, within 15 days conducting a hearing on the case on Tuesday afternoon. As many as four writ petitions were registered at the Supreme Court on Monday, demanding that the oath taken by Oli on Friday be annulled because he refused to repeat all the words President Bidya Devi Bandari had spoken from the written document. They demanded that Prime Minister take another oath of office and secrecy. Oli had omitted the word wow when the President recited the copy of the oath of office and secrecy besides in the name of God courting a serious controversy. Oli was sworn as Nepal's Prime Minister for the third time on Friday, a day after he was reappointed to the post as the opposition parties failed to secure majority seats in parliament to form a new government. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan authorities have announced that an island-wide travel restriction will come into force from 11 p.m. on Friday until 4 a.m. on May 25 in effort to prevent the further spread of COVID-19. Health experts said a new variant of the COVID-19 was spreading across the country and has infected over 30,000 people since May. Sri Lanka on Monday lifted a three-day lockdown imposed to contain the spread of the coronavirus, but the authorities ask people to stay indoors as over 2,000 daily new cases are being reported in the country. According to officials, Sri Lanka will return to a form of continuous lockdown by way of travel restrictions from Friday. The restrictions on movement would be enforced from 11 p.m. on May 21 until 4 a.m. on 25th May local time. It will be reimposed at 11 p.m. on May 25th and will be continued till 29th of May. Only essential services and employees from the apparel sector will be permitted to travel during the travel restriction. As of Tuesday morning, Sri Lanka has reported a total of 145,202 COVID-19 cases and 981 deaths. Health experts said a new virus variant was spreading across the country and has infected over 30,000 people since May. They have warned that the new virus has become airborne and strict health guidelines should be followed. Practitioners of alternative medicine have set up an open-air clinic in a village in India's Uttar Pradesh state where they distribute glucose and other remedies to patients with symptoms of COVID-19. Villagers claim the closest hospital has no beds and people are doing the best they can. In Mevla Gopalgarh, a village in India's Uttar Pradesh state engulfed by COVID-19, Village practitioners of alternative medicine have set up an open-air clinic where they distribute glucose and other remedies to patients with symptoms of COVID-19. There are cows grazing everywhere, the sick are laying under a tree and the glucose drips are hanging from the branches. There is no doctor or medical facility in the village and the closest hospital has no beds. Villagers hope that by sitting underneath the neem tree, known for its medicinal properties, will raise their oxygen levels. But there is no scientific basis for this belief. Sanjay Singh, a villager whose 74-year-old father is believed to have died of COVID-19, said people have no option but to go to quack doctors. He said this is leading to deaths in the village. Oxygen 
सांस फूलने लगते हैं तो हम लोगों को मजबूरी में पेड़ों के नीचे ऐसे ऐसे अपना लेवल बढ़ाना पड़ रहा लोगों को India's devastating second wave of infections has continued to bring hospitals, even in big cities, to a breaking point. In the latest, a medical team had reached the village on Monday to conduct door-to-door -door COVID-19 tests, reports suggest. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline. and follow us on twitter at asia newsline that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time tomorrow good night subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button